So welcome, welcome back to the channel. And this is the video about the Boxster, even though I'm in the 911, the 996. It's about the costs of, well, the costs, the cost that I've incurred buying it, buying it the cheapest manual Boxster with an MOT out there, unseen. And, well, let me, before we go into that, um, just a, quick, just a quick thank you to everybody for still continuing to watch, to listen to my meandering, meaningless, aimless rantings, ramblings, and for hitting like, subscribe, and commenting. Now, so the Boxster. So, as you know, I bought it blind, I bought it off eBay, and I paid the princely sum of £2,200. And I thought, I'd get it delivered. It had something like three months MOT. And I thought I'd just be able to drive it. Because that's the impression I got, even though expressly I wasn't told that, but that's the impression I got. And I thought it would be crusty. And I was told that it might need a clean. But, well, anyway, when it arrived, which I paid 400 pounds to get it delivered. When it arrived, it was... I'm sorry about the wipers, there's still, there's still the noisy wipers on the car. But when it arrived, it was, I mean, gross. Gross to a level that I can't even describe. I didn't think it would be. The oil separator was gone, it needed a new one of those. It was literally squirting coolant out when you started it up. The brake pad light was on and it was, the discs were completely worn through on the back. And the CV boots, shot through the indicator stalk didn't didn't work you couldn't it wouldn't stay um clicked to a side it and to the other side it wouldn't unclick it and if you just touched the in, uh, the wipers they would just come on uh the cv boots obviously were knackered and it's starting to rain it's getting dark it's like four o'clock and then the wheel's really crusty, the paintwork's awful. So I thought, no, I need to get it to a level that it will drive. So I gave it to Jack straight away, got delivered straight to him and said, can you get it just so it runs? So, you know, just replace the oil separator and see what you can do about the coolant leak. So he said, well, actually it's more than just the coolant leak. The fan doesn't work. It's squirting coolant out and I said leave the CV boots even though it was gaping open and so you replaced the radiator you replaced the fan you replaced the oil separator and I'm about to get hit by a bus coach thing and he did all of that and it cost I've got it written down somewhere it cost something like 508 pounds 508 pounds just to get those things back so I could drive it but it was undrivable because it still needed discs and pads the brakes were awful and the strut on the front just wasn't doing anything you could hear literally hear the wheel bouncing up and down and I was terrified going around bends to the point that I spun it through a hedge doing really slow speeds anyway i then thought no i can't i can't use this car parked it at the end of the drive and left it so what i did was then i spent 87 pounds on some brembo discs and pads for the back but gf GF, gsf sent me the wrong discs they sent me the box s discs which i still have which i'll probably use on this car the 996 because i think the rear discs on a box S and these are the same that the drilled uh, vented discs and then I spent about 400 pounds on struts CV boots um, and a couple of other things like fitting kits and things like that for the CV boots to send to Jack then he fitted those I bought a new stalk steering wheel um, stalk for about 60 pounds second hand so CV and I had to pay another hundred odd pounds for discs for the correct ones. So Jack went ahead and fitted the 
disc pads on the back, CV boots, all four CV boots. Only one of them was knackered, but if you're down there, you might as well do all of them. Two new struts on the front, Bilstein OEM spec ones. He did that. I took it for an MOT. It still, every now and again, was burning off the oil in the intake, and I'm hoping that will, you know, uh, burn off by now, because I've driven it quite a few times, but I think if you drive it hard, there's still some in there that will end up in a cylinder and, and need to be burnt off. So past the MOT and what else did I, oh there's a nice Vantage there. Um, I spent 60 odd pounds on uh, an MOT as well and I think that was it. So the, I'm running at about just under £4,000, £3,982. And the thing about it is, you, you'd think, well, actually, I've got a, a 2000 2.7 Boxton 986 in, I can't remember what the official blue is. And you'd think, that's quite a nice car. But it's not, it's still a crusty oh, bird with a rust bubble over an arch. It's got a rip in the seat, but the interior is now quite nice because I've spent a lot of time cleaning that up and the paintwork is all over the place but the advisories on the MOT for the ball joints and the anti-roll bar, the low ball joints and the anti-roll bar bushes, those are the only advisories it has you can tell that when you drive it, it really needs those and it's got the timing chain guides that probably need doing but I don't know if it is that because I think if I drove it more that might quieten down it's, you know, I'm, I'm assuming that I'm assuming that the previous owner it didn't do that and it might be because it was part I'm just making I'm just clutching the straws now of course it did that and he just didn't tell me but so it's still a crusty one it still needs probably about a thousand pounds spent on it not including the timing chain guides to make it drive right so it's not bouncing around <clears throat> so three thousand nine hundred eighty two pounds to have a driving fully MOT'd 2000 2.7 Boxster without air conditioning, without traction control. And I am, I'm kinda, I'm kinda pleased with the fact that it does work, but you know, I really I should just get rid of it and I can't really sell it because, well, I wouldn't get any money for it, but also it's not, <clears throat> I don't know if I, how comfortable I'd feel selling it because I'd have to sell it spares or repairs. I'm getting nothing for it. But at the same time, I don't have a job. So I'm waiting to hear her back after a conversation that I had with somebody and see if that progresses or I need to go all out and get a job. If I could go all out and get a job, I'd get that suspension fixed and just see what happens. And then if, you know, the engine explodes, then I would just bin it. I'd just scrap it. I'd probably sell it to Jack for 50 quid or something. Um, not 50 quid. Jack, if you're listening, but it's got to the point now where it's driving, I can use it, but it's got those issues with the suspension. So I haven't decided what I'm going to do with that, but that's the story so far with it. So, I mean, the lesson here is don't buy one blind if that's got issues. If you buy one blind and someone tells you it's the best thing in the world and they've looked after it and they've, it's got extensive history, that'd be great. But it came with no history. So it had a couple of bills, like I said on the last video, for the engine rebuild, a couple of exhaust things, tires, that kind of thing. But oh, there's a, a spider. I think it's a 718 Spider. Yeah. Um, but it came with some receipts, but nothing regular. It hasn't been serviced at a dealership for a really long time. The engine oil was sludgy and the filter was clogged up. So it means that, you know, it hasn't had an oil change in a really long time. And the previous owner was doing 19,000 miles a year in it. So I guess the advice is, well, then again, I bought my 911 sight unseen and I've been driving sight unseen what does that even mean I didn't see it I just bought it and it was touch wood a success the roads are horrible here and I think that was just dumb luck because then I've gone ahead and bought the Boxster 
and it's been horrific. So I guess, yeah, that's the advice. Don't buy a, a Porsche blind. Go and see it. Oh no, actually, no, you can buy it blind. If you get some assurances that it's had basic maintenance. That one's had no maintenance. So it's just deferred. It's not that you don't, you know, if you miss three services, you just do one service. No, something will have built up. And that's what's happened. Anyway, that's the story so far. I'm not gonna, how long has this video been going? Too long. So I'm not sure what I'll do in the next video. Maybe I'll go out for a drive. Maybe I'll see if I can get it fixed. I don't know. But hopefully the next video is me driving to or from a show. I really wanted to go to um, Air Called Appreciation Society at Cafe and Machine soon, which is the last Wednesday of April. But I don't think I will because the weather's not really up to it. I haven't taken the 912 out of storage this year yet, so I'd literally be firing up and driving there after it being in storage for about six months. So, um, watch this space. Um, thank you for watching. Thank you for hitting subscribe, like, and commenting. Thank you for everybody who's listened to the podcast. Uh, remember, there's a new giveaway. It's the Porsche official um, branded merchandise mug. The, the large coffee, tea, hot chocolate mug. And, uh, and we've got a guest. We've got PJ Gibbons of Classics of the Clubhouse fame. So he runs that event, which I will be at this year. I think it's next month. Not next month. It's May next month. It's in June. And anyway, tune in for that. Thank you for listening, and I'll catch you on the next video.